Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 311. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google Plus and the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us today, we have seven people. Um, we, first, we have uh, uh, Jenny Halaz. Uh, Jenny uh, um, is an analyst and uh, uh, often can be seen on uh, Search Engine Journal. Um, she's based on the... Uh, West coast of the USA, would that be right, Jenny, or not? No, East, no. actually. I'm East. on the East Coast. Oh, you're, you're down near Raleigh? Yes, that's right. Yeah, got it now. Okay. <laughs> and uh, David Razam on the, the, the sunny south uh, of the UK. Um, David uh, um, is an internet marketer and a copywriter of 30-odd years standing. Um, David can be found at writingforseo.org and davidrazam.com. Tim Kappa is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. Uh, he's also a uh, Google product expert on the uh, Google My Business uh, community. Tim's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Um, he's also a Google product expert on the uh, AdSense uh, community. Micah Fisher Kirshner is uh, head of SEO for Turn River Capital in the United States. Uh, he's based on the west coast of uh, the USA. He's a regular on the public speaking circuit, as is uh, Jenny, I think. Um, and, and Richard Hearn uh, is uh, a, a troubleshooter for higher echelon sites. He's based in Thailand. Um, he uh, can be found at redcardinal.ie. All right, let, let's uh, have a look at our, our questions tonight. We have seven. Um, our first is from Johnny Tillotson. Um, it's titled Live with the Redirect or Publish Something Else. He said, um, I have a client who has a domain like HTTPS, uh, www.abccareers.com, but all it does is redirect to a page such as um, abcinc.com, our company slash careers. The Human resources boss put abcareers.com into Google and nothing came up. Uh, I know it's because it's a simple redirect. Is there anything I can do to show Google that abccareers.com actually goes to a page other than maybe adding abccareers.com to the meta title description and maybe on the page itself, uh, like in an H1 or something? By the way, I must uh, point out that the efforts of people like Michael Martinez uh, and uh, Scott Clark, um, who uh, answer questions through the week um, on our SEO questions community or also on our, our Dharma SEO questions Facebook group, uh, their, their contribution is uh, invaluable to us and we appreciate it. Michael Martin has said, uh, if it's redirecting, Google will never see anything you publish on the URL. You must yeah. either the redirect or publish something on the domain. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm with Michael on that one. Um, the, the, <clears throat> the fact that you actually have a redirect, you're basic, assuming it's a 301, is you're essentially saying the page is now permanently over here. Ignore this current page, go to the other. So with that type of redirect in place, that homepage will never show up unless that redirect is gone. And then um, 
you just get Google to, to crawl that on the actual home page. So you get that fixed, you should be good. Who wants to hazard a guess that the only person in the entire world who searches for abccareers.com is one HR boss? Yeah, sometimes I think clients should send their checks and stay away. Nobody wants to touch that. Okay. Right, let's um, move on to number two on our list. If nobody else has anything more to add. This one from Dante J. Fanari. It's titled Creating a Link Structure Targeting Multiple Cities. Dante said, I'm working with a contractor and preparing some strategies for their business. Is there a particular preference when creating link structure targeting multiple cities? Um, example, uh, one, contractor.com slash city slash service, or two, contractor.com slash city dash service. Thanks, guys. Should we go for one? It depends, though. As you know, <laughs> it, it, depends, it depends whether there's multiple services for each city. And then you start to go to beg the question, well, is he starting to, to create a cookie, cooker, uh, a, cut, a cookie cutter site? Um, if there's only one service in the city, there's no, it doesn't make any difference whether he goes to number one or number two. It makes no difference. Hmm. So I, I'm inclined to agree with one just because I think that assuming that he has more than one or two services per city, um, he's creating a, a sort of a, dare I say, silo of, um, <laughs> of city specific content. Um, what he doesn't want to do and what you should never do is just create pages for the sake of creating pages. Um, I think it's really important to point out that unless he's going to give actual quality content specific to each city on each of those pages, then Google's likely just going to ignore them. So at best, they're going to ignore them. And at worst, you may find yourself with, um, with Panda visitation. Right. I, let, I'll counter argue a little bit just based on the question, okay? It sounds very much like this contractor has a service which they want to target against multiple cities. I don't see anywhere there that it says that he has multiple services, so I don't think it'll make any difference. Yeah, if he doesn't have multiple services, then it won't make any difference at all. Yeah, so this is also where then your answer goes to depend on what your future plans are. So if you only are going to do one service, then potentially number two makes sense. But if you're going to have multiple services in multiple cities, that's where number one comes more into play. But I just can't emphasize enough that unless you're going to build local links in those cities, local content, uh, you're ideally have an actual location in that city, then you're just not going to make that map pack unless you are the only contractor offering that service in that city. Um, it, Google is always going to go with an actual local company that has a physical location in that city and has those local links before they go with somebody who is targeting a lot of different cities. Now, that being said, if you're targeting a lot of different cities within the same metro area, then you may find a really high success from targeting all those multiple cities. 
But if you're targeting Chicago and San Francisco and you're physically located in Phoenix, you're you're probably not going to be able to overcome that without all of that local content and local link structure. And when I say local link structure, I mean external links from other sites within that location. Sounds good to me. Thank you all uh, who uh, contributed to that to that one. Um, I'm sure Dante uh, J. Fanari will be very, uh, very much enlightened by it. Uh, okay, let's um, move to the next. This is from Ahmed Ibrahim. Uh, it's uh, on creating uh, an SEO report. Ahmed said, hello guys, uh, I always work on my websites, but I worked, I always work on my own websites, but I worked recently at an agency as an SEO. They asked me to prepare a report uh, for a client at the end of every month. I worked well on the website and uh, achieved great results. Uh, I want to make, uh, something uh, simple and easy for the client to understand. Uh, can anyone help me with that? Or is there a template report for an agency? Um, yeah, I think this is something we all come across um, in this business. The, 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 the solution I um, I use is I, I got fed up with trying to do homebrew reports um, and I use a, uh, a service called Swido uh, which stands for see where you on see where you see where you see no see how you're doing online yeah that's it um, they're they're based in the Netherlands which may uh, may explain it, but um, it allows you to set up a template and suck data in from Google Analytics and from here and there. They're always adding new sources. Um, and the nice thing about it is that um, if you go about the process of agreeing your KPIs, your goals with the client at the beginning, you can agree a template and it takes literally seconds to run the thing off. Um, if you want to, um, if you want to uh, add some commentary at the beginning, you can do that. I tend to add the commentary in the email um, just because, um, it uh, saves messing up the, uh, the, 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 um, um, the the page breaks and so on uh, in the re report. But I can highly re recommend Swido, swido.com. What does it cost, David? Uh, it costs about £40 a month, $40 a month for 20 clients, I think it is. For up to 20 clients. After Tim Kappa gets his Brexit deal done, uh, it'll probably only cost about uh, $10 a month. Ah, uh, yes, the good thing, Brexit. Let's not, not talk about that, or so I might get upset. That was what I was aiming for. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, on oh, sorry, no, can't, can't say that. Not on YouTube. All right, um, that's uh, you a lot, Ahmed, and I hope uh, that proves useful to you. Um, next one is from another one from Dante J. Fanari. It's titled "Do Image Alt Tags Have an Impact on SEO?" Um, he said, I'm currently in the process of working to make a client's uh, site um, ADA access accessible. That, that ADA, I think, would stand for some uh, accessibility uh, standard. Uh, he said, I've spoken with two ADA compliance professionals who have uh, 
uh, stated that according to their data, they don't believe the alt text has any actual effect on SEO. However, a WordPress uh, SEO presentation I, I attended uh, told me that it does have an effect on SEO. What is the general consensus when it comes to images? Uh, is there a, a, an hierarch, a, a hierarchy of importance? Uh, for example, a file name, title, alt text, description, etc. I bring up uh, the uh, ADA because we find ourselves needed to add descriptions in the alt text that don't necessarily hit any keywords in that particular page which is uh, looking to grow in rank. Um, alt text, yes, read by Google. Um, it's one of the, the few things that can actually make sense of what the uh, visual content of a page is. Um, don't fill it with uh, keywords, though. Um, that's a nasty thing to do. But remember that uh, the, the primary usage of an alt tag is for screen readers. Um, so it should make sense. It should actually have some meaning for someone who has sight problems. Um, but uh, yes, well worth doing, well worth sorting out your file name uh, and so on as well. Um, but uh, I find that alt tags are either ignored or just used as a dumping ground for keywords. Um, neither is a good thing to do. So I definitely agree with everything David just said, but I also want to mention um, for anybody who's watching this who may not be familiar, ADA refers to the um, Americans with Disabilities, um, and then I'm not sure if it's ACT or Association, but definitely, um, you know, refers to alt text as a as a disability element, and um, I think uh, even a lot of SEOs don't realize that alt stands for alternative text. Um, and that means that when the image is not loading or when the individual cannot see the image, um, it will either hold the place of the image while the image is being loaded, as is the case if you're lazy loading images, for example, um, or it will be read out on a screen reader. Um, and I absolutely think that alt text in images has SEO value, continues to have SEO value. I have seen personally a significant improvement in images being indexed when I'm using a, like a, when I'm using like a um, JavaScript or an Angular type of environment where we're doing lazy loading and those images are not coming in until a little bit later just putting the alt text on them can definitely encourage Google to go back and index those in images independently, which can be really important for anybody who's doing product sales or any type of OTA, online travel authority, anything like that. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to mention with regard to, to alt text is that absolutely, as David said, you definitely don't wanna stuff the keywords in there. But you should recognize that, you know, instead of saying, and this is kind of my example, I know I've used it before, but instead of saying woman playing, woman using laptop, it can be woman using Lenovo Yoga 910 laptop. It doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be a stuffed keyword to be a useful keyword. Thank you, Jenny. It's also an interesting conversation, an extend, extended conversation, uh, which can be seen uh, on this question uh, in the, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Yeah, there was definitely a, a little bit of an argument that happened there. I, I think I was actually involved in that. <laughs> I think it's interesting also when images are used for links. And when you get something like WordPress, where you have something like image, a link with an image in it, and then you have a link with an anchor text, which often happens with, with things like blogs. If you've no alt text and the image link is first, 
it may be that Google doesn't pick up the actual anchor text from the second link to the same page. So there's various reasons why you want to be very careful of that. Google has a pretty good uh, best practices article on their Search Console help site. It's Google Image Best Practices. And uh, it gives some really good information about what to do with images and alt text and the rest. And as a fun side note, that they uh, just recently have noted a few changes to the uh, image optimization best practices. Yeah, yesterday, I think it was, was it? Or today. Yeah, actually, I happen to know that uh, Roger Monte, who's in this conversation, um, is working on an article about accessibility standards. Um, so uh, I, I don't know exactly where that'll be published, but when it is, I'm certain I'm sure he will drop it on this uh, conversation. But if he doesn't, I will, um, because I think it's going to be really interesting. And I also think that you know, as accessibility becomes more and more important. And in particular, here in the United States, um, people are, are strongly advocating that all sites be held to the same standards that government sites are held to. Um, so anything that deals with government already um, has to have what's called 508 compliance. And you can go and look that up, 508 compliance, and it will explain everything about how these images need to be optimized. And um, and I mean, it goes way beyond just images, but in terms of being accessible and being available for screen readers and for people with various disabilities, 508 compliance is really a, a good standard to go by, in my opinion. Thank you, Jenny. We're losing Tim Kappa. Thank you, Tim. Um, and uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Um, all right. I, I, this um, conversation uh, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group, um, I must have a read of that myself uh, later. JL Favario asks a question titled, City-specific pages don't produce any substantial clicks. Uh, JL said, uh, I'm noticing a lot of city-specific pages don't actually produce any substantial clips, clicks in 2018. Uh, anybody, anybody else? I don't know whether TripAdvisor are doing that badly with some of their restaurant pages, to be honest. I think it lacks a little bit of detail here, this question. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on your site, depends on whether or not uh, there's a massive local map pack that's going to eat up stuff if you're not in the local map pack. Um, so. Yeah, it's just going to depend on kind of what the situation is there. But yeah, like, like Richard's saying, I think it's just you know, large sites are doing perfectly fine. Okay, will we call this an answer for uh, JL Favario? Okay, our next question from Alex T. Besor. Um, he's asked a question titled High Quality Scalable Backlinks. Um, he said, Does anyone have alternatives to getting high quality backlinks that is scalable um, without the gray slash black hat PBN method? I'm giggling at that first response. <laughs> and the second one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, there were a lot of um, answers to that to that that one as well. That was it was a, a good community this week. Well, it's always a good community. Yeah, I mean Scaling-wise, you're looking at what's going to interest like people to be using your service and continuing to want to highlight it. Gee, like, I, 
it doesn't necessarily always have to mean quality content, but a quality product. So if your product is awesome, and you can generally, like let's say in e-com, create multiple versions of, of awesome products, then those are going to help sell itself and um, with you know, a little bit of a push here or there as needed, but uh, um, those are going to help to create kind of scalable backlinks in a, in a more white hat way. Um, after that, then, I mean, things, it's hard to say where the boundaries start to get then when it comes to kind of what's, what's white hat, what's gray hat, depending on various people's views. So, you know, like, is it scalable as in ramping up to, you know, hundreds, thousands of backlinks, or is it scalable as in, like, can you repeat the process over and over uh, as a way to help generate the backlinks in a consistent fashion? Even if it's not a lot, but at least you can generate a, 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 some amount. Then it's d defining what the process is, learn, like, standarding, standardizing what you can do that you know works every time. Um, so it's kind of like, in another way, be like, you know, what is it that gets people to click in and interested? And you might look at, say, a search results and see it's always saying nine tips to do X. Okay, so then everything becomes nine tips. Like if you can repeat that and it does the same, then that's the type of kind of scale you can also consider um, as a way to get what you're trying to go for. I didn't notice this, uh, Justin Brenner uh, um, ha having a go at uh, Michael Martinez. Justin Brenner, look out. Um, all right, let's um, move on to the next. Okay, our last um, question, it came from uh, Micah Fisher-Kirshner. Um, it's uh, titled Tips for Optimizing a Mobile Site's Load Times. Uh, and Micah said, what are some recommended WordPress plugins or tips for optimizing a mobile site's load times? Uninstall WordPress. <laughs> No, you can have a fast WordPress site. Eh? Where was that comment? I didn't see that one earlier, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know about plugins because I think that I think that what uh, this first commenter says is really true. That less plugins are generally better um because they do tend to take up a lot they do tend to create a lot of bloat on your site um especially because a lot of plugins are only used on certain pages but they load on all of the pages um so definitely cutting down on your plugins and cutting down the bloat there is a good move um but i also so my own site and this isn't a plug for my company but if you want to go and look at the at the speed and the code in it um jlh-marketing.com um i worked with a developer to try and streamline this code and get this site loading as fast as possible because i said look i need to eat my own dog food i go out and tell people all the time they need to have a fast site a fast mobile site um and um uh, so I worked with this developer. Um, we installed Divi um, and took all the bloatware out of Divi um, and just worked uh, with with Divi and the Divi based plugins to just take all the bloat out of it, um, streamline as much as possible. I still have a lot of CSS files in there that need to be put together and referenced in a single reference, so we're not making so many calls to the server. But um, but for the most part, the site is pretty damn fast for a WordPress site. So I've been very impressed with um, what we've been what I've been able to do with this developer. Um, definitely W3 Total Cache. Um, any of the the really good caching plugins are good. Um, what I would say is install the plugin, get the HT access code that it puts into your H, get the code that it puts into your HT access file, 
and then uninstall the plugin and put the code back in um, <laughs> because it will still work and then you don't have the plugin. Um, so that's that's definitely something that you can do. Um, and then um, just make sure that anytime you're uploading images, you're uploading them the size that you want them to be, you're not resizing them in the, um, in the media uh, area of WordPress, um, anything like that is gonna slow things down. Um, I, I think that's about all I have to offer on that one. I'm definitely not a developer, so there could absolutely be people that could come up with better stuff than I have. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with how we've gotten there so far. Just I'd be careful about uninstalling the plugin and, and retaining the HT access commands because the plugin actually is doing some things in the back end and it is creating cached files in a folder as you publish. So I, I would be careful about, about retaining the, the, the HD access without the plugin. If your site, your site might still work if it's static, then nothing will change. But if you have a dynamic site, I think you might find you run into some issues there. You may not see them because you're logged into WordPress, but someone who isn't logged into WordPress will hit the cache and the cache won't be there and you'll probably see errors. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So be careful um, I definitely hadn't seen that because my site is mostly static. Yeah. About the only thing that changes is a blog post here and there. So that's a really good point, Richard. Thank you. Just be careful because it does look for your cookie. So it looks to see if you're logged in or not and decides what to do based on your cookie. So you got to be a little bit careful with that one. Um, just coming back to this one, WordPress actually, I think you see a lot more theme developers now are building these very uh, efficient and light themes. Like WordPress, you can nearly abstract out, but as long as you put a cache in for the WordPress, the plugins that are running on the server side shouldn't really come into it. Then all you got to do is you got to make sure that your theme is very efficient and make sure that there aren't plugins that are outputting crap onto your page. So the things that slow things down on mobile are, are generally things like JavaScript, CSS that block, and image files. You can get a lot of juice out of actually making sure that your images are optimized for mobile as well and you serve up the right image based on the, on the, the user agent. That can really shave time off because the latency in the mobile networks, like you've got these big files coming down that, that are not needed for a small phone screen. So that's another area to look at. But definitely the team is probably the biggest thing. Assuming you've got good infrastructure, you put good, you put a good cache in front of it, your team is probably going to be what, what's going to affect it the most, I think. Yeah, I, th I think there's, there's a bit of... Um, Bit that I can throw in from the the non technical non developer um, end of this um, because I've optimized quite a few um, WordPress sites uh, in the past year or so. Um, yeah, put one of the uh, put one of the um, the obvious um, caching plugins in place. Um, some of them are um, are more. Uh, of a bugger to set up than others. Um, WP Rocket is is an easy one. Um, it also um, it also works with uh, uh, hosts like SiteGround's uh, own caching as well, so they don't in interfere with each other. Um, but I found that different caches work more effectively on different sites. I don't know why that is. It's just something I've I've uh, encountered. Um, if you want a really sort of simple um, go to one place, one plugin solution, uh, Hummingbird can work surprisingly well. It's one thumping great um, plugin rather than a load of little ones. Um, it has its own cache. Um, and I've got that working really nicely on one of my client sites. Um, I've got it on one of my own sites as well. It, it's If it works, it's a really nice, simple, one-stop um, solution to it. Um, I'm, not I'm not touching uh, on mobile at all, um, but... You know, basically, load times, um, whether you uh, 
whether you measure them uh, on mobile or, or desktop, you know, the, 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 the thing is that you've got all this crap in, in themes or, uh, or, or plugins full of, um, full of rubbish. So that, that's another thing you can do. Go through, try alternative plugins to the ones that's already in the site. Uh, that, that can be a very nice, easy win. Um, some of the obvious and big name plugins add a huge amount of bloat. Um, and, you know, you can find a, a, a more lightweight one for, you know, with, with the same functionality. Um, but what I find is that every site is different and they all require more pissing about with than you'd expect, more messing about with than you'd expect. Some of that variation, David, actually might be down to the, the infrastructure that's sitting behind some of those sites because some of them will have different infrastructure. And yes, indeed. There's a lot of variation in terms of what people have installed on the servers. So some servers will be higher spec and they'll have different things running on them that are needed to run some of these caches. And that's why different caches, the same settings may not work in different sites. It's to do with what's actually installed on the server at a server level that can actually help you uh, to give you the performance. It, and it's not all there. And like shared host, for instance, won't have a lot of the stuff that you might have in a VPS or or a box of your own. So that's probably where some of that variation comes from. Yeah, I, just out out of cussedness, um, I've got DavidRosen.com on a really cheap shared host, yeah. um, but it performs really well because I I set myself the challenge to you know what can I actually do without flashy hosting or um or a great depth of development or hosting knowledge and you know if you if you follow the the, the rules of not messing up your your uh, wordpress installation with loads of crap and you get a nice nicely coded lightweight theme uh, as you said earlier i think um you know that you, you're you're a long way there um, the, the, the problem is when you come and uh, work on the existing site that's been through various developers' hands and various SEOs' hands, and you've got this, uh, this pile of, of WordPress spaghetti that uh, you, you don't really don't know where to start on. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I hope some of that was of some use. So I, um, I, I want to say just one more thing. Um, Micah, of course, went and looked at my site to see how it scored on PageSpeed Insights. And um, it, it's pretty abysmal. I mean, it's a, I think it's a 40 out of 100. Is that what you said, Micah? Um, but what's interesting about that and what I, I'd love to just take a moment and point out is that PageSpeed Insights grades on compliance not on actual speed. Um, so while I score a 40 on page speed insights, when I actually look at the speed on something like GT metrics, um, I, my first contentful paint was 1.7 seconds and my full load was 2.5. And ever since I made these changes to the site and believe me, there's still a lot more I can do. But ever since I made these changes to the site, I've seen a, a significant improvement in my traffic from Google, my, my positioning and traffic from Google, um, because I really was slow before I was like over seven seconds. So really, really does make a difference if you make significant changes. Now, if you already load in three seconds or less, you may not have as much room to grow. Um, but if you're if you're over four or five seconds, then I would definitely continue to work on it. Well, that's uh, a great set of answers. Um, Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Um, let me just check. I think this is yes, it is. It's thank you for watching time. Uh, if nobody else uh, has anything more to add, we'll close for this week. Uh, and uh
No, nobody else. Okay, so thank you for watching. Um, we appreciate your interest uh, and your interest in what we do makes what we do worthwhile. Um, we'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Uh, but for now, it's good night and thank you very much.